Hello, curious researchers. Today we're going to talk about the person who is going to read your thesis. And let me start by sharing how I imagined my PhD journey is going to look like and how I see for a majority of us the imagination goes. Is that before we start our thesis, we imagine that this work that we are going to do and the thesis that we are going to write is going to impact so many people in one way or another. You can think that many people are going to read your thesis or that your work is going to be revolutionary for some other researcher that is going to come after you or anything that we can see a big impact and also immediately. But we also forget that the PhD thesis nowadays is, let's say, between three and six years. And usually it takes somebody's life work to be life changing. So before I started, my expectations were very high. I wanted to have the fastest modulator in the world because that's what I was working on. And then slowly, when I got to know the field, when I got to know the equipment that I was working on and the requirements in my PhD and also the boundary conditions of my PhD, I understood that it can be the fastest modulator in one specific field, in one specific application, in one specific platform. And then we go narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower, which is also how many PhDs nowadays look like. We are working in very, 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 very segmented fields. And this is usually where our work lands. And I see also with other people, the longer they are in their PhD, at a certain time, there starts to be a desperation that this doesn't make sense anymore. And who is going to benefit from this? If we are in this very, very narrow, narrow, narrow field, how is this going to impact the field? How is this going to impact somebody else's work? And people start to lose hope compared to the expectations they had in the beginning. And now let's see who's going to read your thesis. Along your journey, you are going to probably publish some papers. So people are going to see your work through the papers that you publish, either through conferences or journals. But your work is already going to be out there before you even finish the PhD. And then finalizing the thesis is going to be collecting all the work that you have done and putting it in one place that is going to be your PhD thesis. One very good thing is that your thesis can also contain a set of failures that normally we don't include in the experiments. And for me, this was the biggest advantage of reading PhD thesis is seeing where somebody failed so that I know I don't need to go in that direction. And especially when that's somebody from the group where I was or from a very similar field that applies to mine. So who, who is this person who is going to read your thesis? First, yes, there are going to be professors who are going to be in the committee. They will have to read your thesis because they're in a committee. They're going to ask you questions. So they are the, the people who are obliged in one way or another to read it. Some of them are interested in it. Some of them are doing it, are going to read it and forget it from one day to another. Then there's going to be our family that is going to see the cover of our thesis and uh, maybe, you know, like stick it on a fridge like a magnet. Your parents, grandparents who are going to be proud of you finishing the thesis. But they will probably not understand or read the whole thesis or get involved in it. They will just be proud that there is your name and PhD next to it. Our friends are going to be curious to read the acknowledgements. This is also where I go when friends of mine give me their thesis. First thing I do is I turn the back page and I go to the acknowledgements and I read that. And yeah, those people are going to be 
interested to see how they impacted your journey, but they will probably not understand what is happening in the rest of the thesis. Now, colleagues. Colleagues might be interested to read parts of the thesis, and especially those who are working on similar things, but very rarely people that you work with at the same time are going to be interested in your whole thesis. First of all, because they have already heard you talk about it, they have seen your work, they have seen you from week to week. They know more or less what are you working on. And if they don't know, they're probably not interested and, and they're not going to read it at the end of your thesis. But the thing is, usually what happens when we finish, the knowledge stays in the group. And we, as a PhD, we are going to move on somewhere else. Either we are going to do a postdoc in another group, or we are going to move to a totally different job. The thing is that all this knowledge that we have been developing is going to stay with the professor and is going to stay with the group. This is going to be the IP of the group. All the data, all the models, everything that you have been developing, that is now group's knowledge. And this is useful because usually group has a certain continuity. So if there is also a continuity between projects, there is a person after you who is going to come and be interested to continue where you left off. For me, this is a person that I was thinking of when I was writing my thesis. I was thinking about myself when I was starting and the thesis that I have read, what they meant to me when I started in the group, in the field that I was working on, leveraging on the group's knowledge, how to continue from there. And I wrote it for the person who comes after me. Because most probably this is going to be the one person for whom this is going to be the most useful piece of work. This is going to be their Kickstarter. Usually when you start, the professor is going to ask you to do a literature review. And if somebody wrote a thesis, already the introduction is a literature review. Already shows you the state of the art up until that point. And this is a beautiful place to start. So hoping that there is continuity and that you can write it for the person that is going to come after you, this can inspire you. Even though you're not going to meet the person, even though you might leave the group and the person is going to come afterwards and you might never know about it. Or there's going to be another group in another country that is interested in exploring exactly the same thing. Maybe not at the point when you finish your PhD, maybe five years later. Maybe five years later, they have the exact resources and the exact more or less knowledge that your group had at the time when you finished your PhD. So somebody finds your thesis and can use it to learn something, to use it as a Kickstarter and to continue where you left off. Because ultimately what we do in research is that we provide a piece of information for somebody else who is going to come afterwards. And then if we look at, let's say our lifespan, let's look at 100 years, our life's work is going to be a platform for the next generation, for somebody else who is going to come after us and who is going to continue and leverage on the knowledge that we have left in the world. So I hope that you can find inspiration writing your thesis for only one person. Because that one person could have been yourself when you were starting your PhD. Somebody else's thesis might have served you to start your PhD. And now your thesis might serve one other person to continue the work where you left off. <laughs>